Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll be learning about a very important tool in the DSLR camera, which is called the light meter. Now, we have a separate video, which is dedicated to learning the usage of light meter in a very in-depth manner, but that is later on in this course. Right now, I just want to touch the surface and teach you the basic use of the light meter with respect to ISO. So let's quickly see what a light meter exactly is, where is it located in the camera, and how does it function. Let's go there. If you switch off the live view, and you see the following screens on your Nikon and Canon cameras, you can locate the light meter by finding something that resembles a timeline with a positive value on the right side and a negative value on the left side. On some cameras, it can even be the opposite, but that's perfectly fine. It still is the light meter. The next thing in a light meter that you need to see is what we call as the pointer. The pointer shows where the light meter is pointing at. This is for a Nikon camera and on the Canon camera, sometimes you need to half press the shutter button to activate the pointer. Now you can see the pointer is activated. This will remain pretty much the same in every other brand of camera. Now let's see what does this pointer and this light meter signify through a demo of the light meter. Let's say that we want to take a shot of this flower that is in front of us. So let's see how the light meter will help us getting the correct exposure for this shot. That means getting a shot which is neither too dark or nor too bright. So let's just switch off the live view so that we can see the exposure meter or the light meter in a better way. So you can see the light meter inside the live view also. Now for this first shot, let's select the settings of 1 by 100 shutter speed, f-stop 8 and ISO 100. And let's see where the light meter is pointing at. So if I half press the shutter button on a Canon camera, I can see where the pointer is at right now. And you can see it's way towards the negative side, which means the light meter is trying to tell us if we take a shot right now, this shot will be underexposed or dark, just like you can see here. So it's time to increase the ISO value so that the light meter starts moving towards the right hand side. So let's try it at 400 and let's see where it's pointing at. Now it's at minus two. This is better than before, but you can see if I still take a shot right now, it's still going to be dark or underexposed, just better than before. That's great. Let's try it at ISO 800. And let's see where the meter is pointing at. Ultimately, we have to bring this light meter in the center. That's where you'll get a balanced exposure. So let's see at 800. Now it's gone to minus one. So still not perfect. So it still will be slightly underexposed, but you can see that we're getting there. Maybe in the next value now at 1600, we'll be able to get it in the center. Now you can see it's in the center. So this shot will be of a balanced or perfect exposure, just like you can see here. Not too dark, not too bright. But just to show you, let's also take an overexposed shot. So if I really increase the ISO value, let's say, let's take it to 6400 this time. Now let's see the meter pointer. You can see it's towards the plus, between plus one and plus two. That means this shot will be overexposed or very bright as you can see here. So this is how the light meter works. It helps us get the image, which is of the correct exposure just like the image that we took on the second last shot in which we got this shot. Later on, you'll also be seeing how the other settings of shutter speed and aperture or the f-stop number can help you control where this meter is pointing at. Right now, we've only seen it with respect to ISO because currently we're on this section where we're learning about ISO. So I hope this demo helped you to understand how the light meter works. That's great. So now you know how the light meter operates. Now the real reason I included this right now is because the knowledge of how the light meter operates will enable you to select the correct ISO in our future exercises that are about to come in this course. Because what will happen in those exercises is that I'll be telling you which setting to use. So I'll be able to tell you which shutter speed to use. I'll be telling you which f-stop or aperture number to use. But the problem is I will not be able to tell you which exact ISO value to choose because the exact ISO value will, will change for everyone 
according to the lighting conditions that they are shooting in. So just the knowledge of how the light meter operates will enable you to select the correct ISO by bringing the light meter in the center, just like we have seen in the exercise before. Just to understand this in a better manner, let's quickly see what you will be required to do when we are doing a particular exercise. So let's say we are doing an exercise in which we are taking this shot and I have told you to select a shutter speed of 1 by 30 and an f-stop number of 5.6 like shown on the screen here. So that is pretty easy to do because that will be same for everyone. But when it comes to selecting the correct ISO, that will differ for everyone according to your lighting situation. So to select the correct ISO, you will have to look at the light meter which can even be seen on the live view screen. So right now you can see that this particular light meter is pointing slightly towards the positive side. The pointer just disappeared but when you saw that it was pointing slightly towards the positive side. So what we'll have to do here is we'll have to decrease the ISO value. So once I go from 6400 to 3200 you can see the pointer is still towards the positive side. So let's try it at 1600 and this time you can see that the pointer is at the center. So for this exercise 1600 would be the correct value of ISO to shoot this exercise at. The procedure will remain exactly the same even if you found that the meter was pointing towards the negative side to start with. In that case, you'll just have to increase the ISO value till the time the meter comes in the center. So that is how you will select the correct ISO in the exercises that we will be doing. Because getting the light meter in the center will ensure that you get the proper exposure when you do that exercise. That's great. So now you know how the light meter will enable you to select the correct ISO when we're doing an exercise. Now at this point, I want to congratulate you because you have completed learning the first setting inside the manual mode, which is ISO. Now in the next section, we'll be learning about another important setting in the manual mode, which is called shutter speed. So I'll see you there.